equipment, um, and then let's say every three years there's something that you need to bring in to, to uh, stay in order, and you can pay the ticket for that or just come in. Um, that might be a set fee if they are set floor on the sewer side of the state, I'm not sure. Um, and then if you do that, uh, you have to pay the fees per ticket. Let's, let's say every three to five years you want to bring over something new in there, they'll set a fee by fee rate um, for those, uh, not every year, sorry, but uh, just related to um, just anything that's extra. And then the final thing that you would want to confirm with your CPA is the section 179 and the bonus depreciation where you get to write off um, your, you get to depreciate your, the equipment over time. And again, that would be, I should have asked um, Jack if that was going away in 2018 with the new tax law changes. I don't believe that it is, but okay. Okay, so that's good news for you there. So we'll move on to more about, yes, question. So for example, let's say I spend $100,000 on a new x-ray machine. So what is the tax benefit of that? So you get to, you get to depreciate that. Generally, it's like over seven year period, right? So, so if I'm on like in a 40% tax bracket, I'd have to pay I would normally, that $100,000 of income to me would cost me $40,000 in taxes, right? But I get to write that off over seven years, but I pay like... You write it off in one year. Yeah, you can, year, but you can... A year instead of all 40, basically? Um, it depends on, like, yeah. for equipment, it's like, it's usually trailing. Um, some some accounts will let you take the depreciation all up front, depending on the right. type of equipment. So you'll see a big benefit early, and then it'll trail late. That's usually how you see it for, for depreciation. Yeah. Okay. And, and that, that, unfortunately, I'm not a tax accountant, so I'm not going to, he knows a little bit more about that. So anything you want to add? And Ryan from Practice Pathways, I don't know if all of you know, he just came in to join us. So that's why I'm deferring some of my questions to him. So I know more about, like, money in your bank account cash okay <laughs> so we can talk about that so generally speaking how many of you have three months of your income in your personal bank account right now <laughs> very good okay so that's fantastic dr wyman so i really think when when we got asked saving money for a rainy day it's very important if you can to put aside money to, to cover like your short months. Maybe there's a, a month where you're not seeing as many patients, but if you can work towards accumulating three months of your expenses into an account, that that's your first step. And then after you get that, then you might want to start planning for like your retirement, like Dr. Wyman's term insurance, long-term care, your, anything that you're going to put, put aside for your future. Okay, so that, you know, even though you have 400000 in student loan debt, I would suggest that you try to put something aside for yourself. Because really, if you pay, especially, I can tell you from experience, start when you're young to put away money into something, truly, because you've got the, the benefit of time, where as you get older, you have to put more away to make as much, maybe even two to three times more. So I wish I would have listened to somebody a long time ago and did that, so, okay. Any questions on that? How many of you are gonna start putting away a little bit of money? What about if it's just a dollar a week? Come on, you can do, you can do that, it's one less Starbucks. <laughs> one less Starbucks, okay. So, and then, then you want, then you're, maybe you can't, a qualify for a loan yet, but you're going to open your business account, right? Because you're going to need to go to a bank and open a business account. How many of you have business accounts? I think some of you do already. Okay. So when you go into a bank and you're going to open a business account, generally there are fees associated with business accounts, but it kind of, like John said, we're all about a relationship. So whether you have lending with us, um, also it depends on you can keep certain balances in the account to avoid getting fees. We're going to basically ask you, what's your activity going to look like in and out of the account? How, how many transactions are you going to have a month? So that will kind of help us determine 
what business account to put you in. Okay, we, we, we do make money on fees, but we'll try to do the best that we can to put you in the account that won't cost you as much. Okay, then the other thing that we do, uh, and Jack Cohen had mentioned it, like the merchant services, how many of you know what that means? That's bank talk. Dr. Wyman does. So does anybody else know? So you know when you swipe your credit card and there's the machine? How many of you swipe a, have swiped a credit card today? Yes. Okay, so there's a, <laughs> there's a company that, that does that. So like Dr. Wyman probably has a merchant services account with somebody. So that's something where it's basically a, a, a method of collecting payment. So that's something that your bank can do for you. The other thing that Jack Cohen brought up, fraud protection. So he was saying maybe you have one person take in the money and the other person deposit the money. Um, through what we call treasury or cash management, we have different services that can help you manage fraud on your account. So like maybe you only, you get to see all the activity and you're approving, ac you know, checks going in and out and maybe your office manager doesn't know that you have that. So there's lots of things that the bank can do to help you move money in and out of your accounts. Uh, to make it efficient and to help you keep some control over it. So any questions on that? No? And most of the time anymore, we're going away from cash, right? So that's where the merchant services is a really huge piece when you're running your practice. You're most generally going to accept co-pays possibly, and then sometimes you're going to have, you know, things that insurance won't pay for, so you're going to want to get payment from your patient. And then the business credit card. So basically your business credit card is probably for th things that you're going to not have, like the, eight, the 0 to 18 months that you're going to use it for. Small ancillary things. Um, you really have to determine, like, on your personal credit card, usually how many of you like cash back or do you like points to accumulate. So it's generally how a business credit card works. And John will go into that more and how that's included in your entire debt package when we're looking at evaluating you and giving you money. We're not just going to look at um, your loan that you have. If you happen to have a business credit card with us, um, we're going to take, take that into account too. So that's just part of the package. Generally speaking, your banker should offer you a business credit card versus you using your personal credit card um, to run your practice. Any questions on that? No? Here, I'll, I'll, I'll shill for the Nevada State Bank. OK. My banker uh, called me in November. And she told me, hey, I know you already have credit cards, but Nevada State Bank is, uh, is offering a great incentive for new business credit card holders. So she said, if you spend $7,000 in the first 90 days, we're going to give you back $1,000. Is that a no-brainer? Yeah. I spend seven, I get $1,000 back cash, back into my account. Okay, so I said, sure. So I used it for two, two months and I easily spent $7,000, but uh, but I got I got a thousand dollars back from the bank, so I didn't. As Tara and I were laughing back there because we always go cash. I always mm -hmm. get a cash back because what the hell is a point? What the hell is an airline mile? <laughs> you know, I don't know. I buy my I buy my tickets like three months in advance, so I'm only paying 79, 79 bucks each way anyway. So um, <laughs> so I mean these are these are all the things you have to think about when you're running your business. You know, mm -hmm. and believe me, you think you think how much you're going to run through your business accounts in a year, and it'll just blow your mind. Right, right. and that that's what I was going to say. The other thing you were asking, like how far ahead. So make sure that at least once a year or every couple years, as your business increases, maybe you opened your account and you're only allowed a hundred transactions, and that's all you had, like. That's money in and out. But then 
and you forgot to pay attention to it. And two years later, you're having a thousand activities go through your account and you're still in the account that you're only allowed a hundred tra transactions. And then you look at your bank statement and you're like, ah, I got it. Why am I getting all these fees? And then you come into us and you want us to reverse it. <laughs> and <laughs> that, you know, so it's uh, pay, pay attention to your business and evaluate all of your financial things that you have and make sure that you're in the right accounts. And if you're and a good banker should be sitting down with you. Like I know for a fact on our team, we're required to touch base with our clients every quarter. And generally once a year, we ask that we come out and sit down with you to go over everything that you have with us and make sure that we're doing the best job that we can. What's changed with you in the last year? What hasn't changed with you? So that if we need to change you to a different account, we'll do that. The other thing to, that's always very competitive is your merchant service account. You'll understand that. Like you need to stay on top of that and make sure that you're getting the best deal that you can um, for yourself and for your patients on that. So we went over, uh, for myself, we covered the SBA website that talked about business plans, equipment, term financing versus leasing the equipment, uh, the business accounts, and then um, money in the bank for a rainy day. How many months did you try to have Okay, I like the second, the first answer is six, but three a minimum would be great. So uh, if you want to take a couple minutes to make a quick break, I'm going to change the mic over to John, and then we'll finish. And we'll probably maybe run about 10 or 15 minutes over since we started about 15 minutes late, if that's okay with you all. Yes. yes. Um, so this is the question about acquisitions. We're getting a So how important is, is the production reports and how much money should you have in cash in the bank to make you guys feel comfortable? It, it all depends on how much the practice is that you're acquiring. And I can let John kind of go over that a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. He's the underwriter. Uh, so I'll let him answer that more technical question for you, if that's all right. 